Our next student preacher is the gorgeous, beautiful, I'm just, groundwork, just, you know, I won't be a first year forever, uh, <laughs> Simone Brandon. Hello, everyone. Hi, nice to meet you. Brendan James, good idea. That was great. Is it Brendan James, right? Oh, sorry. A little bit awkward. Me and BJ, we practically actually kind of grew up together. Hey, he's from Raglan. I'm from Tikiwiti, which is like an hour from each other. Yeah, in New Zealand. Yes. We're going to get like best friend necklaces, maybe. Hey, BJ? Man, what was it? Struan? Is that who was on before? Yes? Take me to London, man. It was so good. <laughs> All right. I just want to say thanks to Carly for the preacher talk. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm just going to read from Ezekiel 37, so you can turn there if you like. I'm going to read the first five verses, and I'm going to go from there. Okay. I felt the power of the Lord on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and put me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me around among the bones, and I saw that there were many bones in the valley and that they were very dry. Then he asked me, human, can these bones live? I answered, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to the bones. I will cause breath to enter you so you will come to life. I will put muscles on you and flesh on you and cover you with skin. Then I will put breath in you so you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Okay, so we all have like dry things in our life. Do you know what I mean? Like I think we have till the day we die, we're going to have things that need to be brought back to life, just like the scripture is saying. And for me, about a year ago, one of these dry things in my life was um, sorrow. I guess there were lots of things that I had reason to be sad about, and God wanted to change that to joy. And I know there's things here tonight that people have that they're holding before God, and they're like, God, I need you to do something. Just like this verse, I need you to bring this back to life. And so God said that to me at the beginning of last year, that he wanted to replace my sorrow for joy. And so... I was, I was like, all right, God, I'm going to do everything I can to make this happen. And I got all these like tapes on Joy, Joy Smire and, you know, all this stuff. And I like <gasps> had this little bookshelf of things like books on Joy. And whenever someone was preaching, I was like, oh, I better take notes. And I'd pull out my big notebook and write down things about Joy. And I thought I had it all sorted, okay? And it was like I was running a marathon. I just had to do all this stuff. I was like, okay, yep, I need to get this happening. I was like, oh, I need to get up early and pray about this. And I was just exhausted and I remember one day just lying and flopping onto my bed and I was like God I'm sick of this I'm just sick of trying to make this happen and I think so many of us can be like that like we try and make this we know what needs to change and we try and make it happen and as I flopped onto my bed God showed me a picture of when I was little he made me remember this thing that I had done I used to I wasn't into Barbie dolls hey Barbies were like a little bit pornographic I think <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't go down that track people in Tikiwiti we were raised up right and so <laughs> I used to get a cardboard box and like nail it to a tree and make tree huts and stuff like that that's the kind of thing I was into so one day I got my box <laughs> got my cardboard box and my nails and I got this big ladder actually my dad helped me carry the ladder because it was like quite long and I took it to the tree and I climbed up the tree and I put it up there and this big yeah I don't understand how big this ladder is so I climbed like meters up this tree okay we've got big trees in New Zealand big ones and I got to the top and I nailed my cardboard box to the tree and I was sitting in my box and I was having a glorious time and then my the ladder fell down and I had no way to get back down and dad he was like it was in the morning he was off to milk the cows so he was like strolling along <laughs> I'm not joking, this is actually my life, this is what I come from, and he was walking along, and he saw the ladder was down, and he said to me, he was like, Simone, looks like you need some help, do you want me to help you get down, I was like, no, no, I'm fine, and I just kept sitting in my box, because I didn't want him to help me, because I had climbed this whole way, put this box, nailed it in, and I was not going to let him help me, so I sat there for about five hours, because I didn't want him to help me get help him I didn't want him to help me you know get down and so okay the day dad spends a whole day on the farm he came back at the end of the day from milking the cows and he walked past and I was crying I was like <laughs> 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 I'm 
maybe it was a bit heavier than that. And he said to me, he came to the tree and looked at this huge tree and was like, Simone, looks like you need some help, don't you? And I was like, yep. And so he put the ladder back up and he got me down. And you know, God showed me this picture. This is what it's been like for me trying to make stuff happen in my life. I tried all these things, and I tried all these ways to bring joy back into my life. I had got books and books and disc after disc and taken notes after notes, and I was exhausted. And as I lay on my bed, I realized that's exactly what I've been doing. I've gotten up that tree, and my daddy had come along and said, do you want some help? Do you want me to get you down? And God says that to us. He comes up to us, and he just simply asks you, do you want some help? And I said, yes, but before that, I was just going crazy trying to come up with ways to get free. But God is saying to you today, do you want some help? And all you have to say is, yes, I do, Daddy. Can you get me down from this mess that I'm in? And he just makes it so simple for us, and I think we forget that sometimes. And the day I was lying there and just feeling so exhausted, he reminded me of this verse in Ezekiel. And I'd read that thinking, oh, okay, so I need to prophesy over my life and I need to, make this, need to make this happen. But he said to me that day that, no, that's not what it's about. The thing is, the Holy Spirit prophesies this over me every day just because I've said to God, yes, I need you to help me. And so every day he's prophesying over your life and he's the one that brings freedom, not us. And I think we forget that freedom is free, hence freedom, you know, it's free. We don't have to do anything for it. All you have to do is like what you were saying before, Johnny, was so good. Just how it's not about like trying to lift your hands a bit higher to get freer. Like that's what I was doing to get joy. I was like, okay, God, if I lift my hands this high, will you give me joy? But he's just saying, all you need to do is so slightly even just to lift your hand like this and he'll come a hundred miles to you you know there's a verse in like second chron corinthians that talks about how as soon as a face even so slightly turns towards god his spirit will come flooding in and bring freedom into your life and i just want to encourage you this morning if there's there are things in your life, because everyone has them, and I still have dry bones in my life that God needs to breathe life into. And all you need to do, all you need to do is just say, God, I want this free gift. And that's it, and he's going to do the rest. Thanks, Simone. I know uh, the Apostle Paul wasn't too into female preachers, but I think if you saw Simone, it'd be fine with the idea. <laughs> 